Now, that was an impressive crowd. Uh, a lot of Ghada supporters out here today. Well, our next two speakers are actually very good friends of mine. One of them is my best friend, and the other, don't want to make him jealous, but he's his best friend, and I'll get to that in a point. Uh, they're quirky, they're very undescribable, but they do have a very great idea that they'd like to share with you today. I'd like to introduce onto the stage Adil Henwi and Muhammad Samur. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Adil Hilmi and my name is Mohammed Samur. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about an inspirational story and an innovative idea. So basically we're going to relay our experiences to you and we want you to relive our memories as along the way. So the story revolves around two medical students who had an interesting idea that actually has nothing to do with medicine. but we were able to actually visualize and initially create a project that could change the world. It's not like we jumped right away from having the idea into making it into a real project. We actually had our share of, of hardships, obstacles that we had to overcome. So when I first heard about TEDx Dead Sea in Jordan, uh, I heard about it uh, through a friend. Uh, I was very interested, just much like you, I wanted to be inspired, see what everyone is all passionate about. So when I went, I went to the event, saw all the people on stage, Every one of them had a passion for his own project. I was actually jealous. I wanted some, some of that for my own. So one day, a after a couple of days uh, of the event, I was just sitting at home, and I wanted to force out a uh, project for my own. And this branching structure came out in, in my head, uh, an image. I didn't actually know what to make of it at the time. But after a while, I was able to combine that image and solve some of the social networking problems that are faced in the social world. All right, so as we all know, most of you know, uh, the general rule for business is to find a need and fill it. So we, we, we found, we identified the most of the problems that are faced in the social networking websites, and we tried to solve those issues. So think about it. The age we live in now is the information age. We have so much information we have to go through every single day. But I don't think we have enough time to actually go through it. The problem is we still try, and we waste so much time going through information that we don't really need. So I decided to test this, th test this theory, and I wanted to see how much I use Facebook. And it turns out that I have to open about 20, 20 tabs every single day just to go through all the information I get from Facebook. And then 10 of the tabs are already identical, so it was a complete waste of time. So we wanted to find a solution. But to get to the solution, I want to tell you what we think socializing should be. You are all living beings, and you have thoughts living in your heads. But once that thought leaves your mind, is it dead? We want to give it life. And living beings interact with one another. Once the thought leaves your head, we don't want it to just stay there and do nothing. We want it to interact. We want it to move around. And we want to kind of create an interactive and simple way of socializing. All right, so what was the next step for my project? Uh, I needed to take action. So I went around my university in Jordan asking professors, uh, heads of computer departments, about what advice do I need to continue with my project. But I was only faced with total disappointment. No one actually helped me. I was let down by almost everyone. So uh, I didn't really want the idea to die out at an early age, so I just kept working on it. And, and basically, after everyone turned him down, he turned to his last resort, me. <laughs> and like the best friend I am, I laughed in his face. That was the first time. Then I started to see his point of view. I started to understand the idea. I started to realize that he has something here. I mean, all the major sites, Facebook, Twitter, and Wikipedia, they were just ideas. But now you, every one of you use them every single day. So why can't we do that? Why can't we make a difference and make something happen in this world? So combined together with each of us supporting each other, I think we were able to do that. And Project Arboreal was born. So I'm sure most of you are going like, what is Arboreal? So I'm going to just go into explaining what the word means. Its origins are Latin, and it means living within trees. And we're going to try and explain to you what we mean by that. All right, so the key aspects we were looking into developing it, uh, into our idea were being able to make it simple, accessible, and easily connect people. We wanted to develop this one-page interface that would allow you to have all the social uh, uh, actions you need to do whenever you log in without the need to have open more tabs or more web, web browsers. So we want to say goodbye to right-click, open tab, and welcome to the world of simple navigation. All right, so continuing with the story, after I've told Adil about my idea, 
he actually managed to get us to meet uh, with one of the uh, st IT staff members in Al Faisal University, Mr. Akram. He was actually very kind and very helpful. That he actually uh, set an appointment with one of his friends who's a really great developer. Um, yeah, so after we saw that it was going somewhere, we're starting sketching. We, we, you have to, we have to uh, make our ideas into actual, uh, actual uh, sketches on paper. So once we got this news from Akram, I was like, okay, that's it. I'm dropping out of med school and just calling up Mark Zuckerberg or something. But in reality, that's not what happened. We had no idea what we were getting into and how the road is going to be so difficult. And we did meet with this developer. He was helpful. He told us ideas. He told us how to do it. And he even told us that he would start working on the project as soon as possible. And then we never heard from him again. <laughs> so it kind of died out. <laughs> it was dead for a while. But then I was too passionate about the idea to just leave it be. So I managed to uh, uh, meet, w meet up with TEDx director in Jordan. And I I've, ta I've talked to him about my idea, who is very excited and very keen to even help us. And he even offered financial and moral support. Uh, but on the same day, to show you how coincidental and spontaneous this was, uh, I was just visiting a friend's house. And it turns out his brother is a graphic designer. And he's the one who's actually uh, made our project into a virtual presentation. So you see what's happening here. Two medical students had an idea that has nothing to do about medicine. And we were inspired, and we worked, and we kept getting rejected, and we kept going over the obstacles. We got stronger with every time, until we actually found people to support us, the resources. And once we found that, so many doors opened up, and we were like, that's it, we got it, we can do this. And now we're gonna give you a sneak peek of what we have in store for all of you. All right, so this is the one page interface I was talking to you about. You can see how this branching structure, uh, you have the leaves which represent your posts, the branches which represent your different social aspects of social life. Uh, you can fit a huge amount of posts in this one page. We've also provided all the actions that you need through the social experience. Since we've added a lot of, a lot of amount of information on one page, we also wanted it to be easily accessible. So we devised this uh, uh, interactive zoom in, zoom out system which would allow you to view all your posts in, in one page without the need to move out. And also, if you want to view every post individually, you can just click it, and it'll pop up, and you, you'll see all the details related to the post. So this is what we want. We don't want a new website. We want to revolutionize how people connect and how people socialize. Not for the random person in public, but for people who value their time, for people who value how to connect. Think about the possibilities you could do. You could easily go through all the information you need in a few minutes. You could discard the, the ones you don't care about, and you could share the ones you do. And we want to change the world. So what stands in our way? What stands in anybody's way? There are always obstacles. And surprisingly, the most important obstacle in my mind are people. And I'm not dissing people. Some of you might say that you know people support you. You find people, and they help you. Well, I'd like to say that some people don't do that. Some people bring you down. Some people try to block your way, whether it's because they're jealous, whether it's because they have different views, whether it's because they just think differently, you can't change the world. But you can change the way you interact with the world. So instead of you know, trying to avoid these people, you should do the opposite. You should find people that can support you, the same way Sam found me and we found the developers. All right, so when you look, when you look at the obstacles that are local in our region, you tend to see that the limited resources we have you, you can't, uh, let's, so let's, uh, let's face it, the Middle East is not an actual place or of, a go of a gold mine of resources. We lack uh, professionalism. We have overpriced services for, uh, if you need a good company. So we should invest more, learn to invest more in our entrepreneurs and young businessmen and pave their way to success. And another thing that's pretty common in the Arab world uh, is the saying that if it's not broken, don't fix it. I mean, people here don't bother with things that already work, right? But the thing is, they have to try and understand something. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're trying to make a better wheel. We want to be able to provide something better. I mean, so what? The Germans have better cars. The Americans have better websites. That doesn't mean we can't make something even better. So we should try and improve on that. And it doesn't want to go. <laughs> it stopped on the stop sign. <laughs> All right, let's go from there. So how do we succeed? Uh, the internet age we're, we're in today uh, allows you to transform a virtual idea, an image in your head. Like it might be a crazy or a simple idea, but it allows you to transform that idea into an actual project. 
while in back in the day you had to have actual mechanical uh, representation of your of your of your ideas and dreams i mean honestly someone was able to change the idea of throwing birds at pigs who for some reason stole their eggs into the most popular game in the world yeah so in this uh, these days you see the, the trust issues you know uh, but you know sharing your opinions and ideas with others you know you're afraid that they might steal it but in general, you, sh you shouldn't be scared. You shouldn't be scared about sharing your opinions and ideas. So you need to find someone that you trust uh, and tell them about your idea, about your dream. And that person might be able to even make your idea flourish and make it more probable and achievable. But the, there are some studies that show if, if, if the more you tend to announce your, your goals, it gives you a false satisfaction, tricks your mind into false reality and false satisfaction, which renders your goal less achievable. So let's think about the whole stealing ideas thing. It happens. People are afraid, and you're supposed to be afraid of that. But Akram mentioned something very interesting that I want to tell you guys. If someone steals your idea, what are they exactly stealing? They're stealing a dead thought, a plan that has no future. What he's missing is the key ingredient that I believe is important in every single project and idea, and something we would like to call personal creativity. And this leaves a mark on your idea, but also directs your project in a certain special way. And that's why I believe that two ideas and projects are never exactly the same. So we talked about the idea. We showed you that we want to change the world of socializing. We want to do so much. But we're two medical students, and it doesn't fit that we're up here talking about a social network. But we were inspired. And inspiration comes in many forms. It could be an apple falling from a tree. It could be birds flying in the sky. The good thing about inspiration is that it's the basis of all projects. But the funny thing about inspiration as well is that it's also, luckily, contagious. Yes, we wish to inspire by entice enticing jealousy. Like, if, if, you if you see someone with this great project, you would want to do the same for you, right? So look at us, like Adam said, we're both medical students who work on a project that is way out of our league. So if we can do this, it means you can, you can, you can do that as well. Um, we, in the end, we wish to inspire you as we have been inspired and continue the chain reaction of inspiration and ideas. Just know this. No matter how different it is from your major or from your job, it doesn't matter. Inspiration is inspiration. And you should embrace it no matter what. But you have to be careful because you can't be blind to inspiration, but you should not let inspiration blind you from the rest of your life. All right, in the end, we'd like to thank you we hope to see your tree soon. Uh, we need your feedback. We'd love to hear your feedback, even if it's on our matter, uh, on, on our project, our idea, or our talk. Uh, we'd also uh, like to be contacted if you're interested in our project more, like to know more about the project, the details. So please contact us. And remember, intelligence is of no value without people. We need you. Thank you.